Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing good and preparing well for the upcoming examination. I am Gulapsa, your mentor for Finance Current Affairs and I welcome you once again to another session of RBI 247. But today's session is special here because today's session mein we are going to discuss the all the questions that we have done in the month of December. So December ke month mein jitne bhi finance related news the, usse related jitne bhi questions hai, we are going to discuss in today's session. So without any delay, let's get started. So the first question that we have on the screen says, with regards to the cooperative, which of the following statement is the R correct? सबसे पहले अर्बन कोऑपरेटिव बैंक्स के बारे में बहुत सारे डिटेल नोटिफिकेशन आरबीआई ने रिलीज किए थे सो दिस टॉपिक इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम योर एग्जाम पर्सपेक्टिव कैटेगराइजेशन किया गया है नेट वर्थ के बारे में बताया गया है एज वेल एज कैपिटल एडक्वेसी रेशियो के बारे में भी आरबीआई ने नोटिफिकेशन रिलीज करी है सो दिस न्यूज इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट लेट्स रीड द स्टेटमेंट्स द फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट सेज कोऑपरेटिव्स आर इंपॉर्टेंट व्हीकल फॉर फाइनेंशियल इंक्लूजन व्हिच इज वेरी करेक्ट नेक्स्ट the first society that was formed on the basis of mutual help was Anyanya Sahakari Mandali, which is again very correct. This was the first society and we have discussed about this. The third statement says, cooperative banks are part of the state list under the seventh schedule of the constitution. Subsequent so, so cooperatives, let's say cooperative or cooperative societies, they are under the state list. State list ka matlab kya hoa? State government ke paas puri power hai, puri authority hai in order to look after these subjects. But whenever banking comes into picture, and we also know that RBI is the regulator of all the banks. So, in that case, RBI is the central authority, right? In that case, the cooperative banks or the banking system comes under the central list. Theek hai? So, ye statement aapka dalat ho jayega. So we need to identify the correct statements. One and two option A will be the correct answer to this question. Let's move forward to the next question which says consider and identify the incorrect statements. Now how many can have incorrect statements identify kar rahe hain? Cooperative credit societies that cater to the credit needs of its members can accept deposits from public which is wrong. Why is it wrong? Cooperative banks can do so. But these are societies and in this case, what we discussed was that it works on the principle of mutuality, mutual help. So, public se kabhi nahi lega. it will accept deposits only from its members. Second, urban cooperative banks and cooperative societies other than a primary agricultural credit society which is very correct. This is the definition of UCB. Third, there is a duality of control in case of cooperative banks which is very correct because they are also registered under the state list that is under the state cooperative act or the central cooperative act and RBI also regulates them. So, jitne bhi banking related functions hai, that is being taken care by RBI and all the administrative related work are being entrusted with this cooperative act. So this is also correct. Incorrect statement here is just one. Therefore option B will be the correct answer. Let's move forward to the next question. The question says which of the following statement is correct regarding the UCBs. First, matters related to banking are regulated by the Reserve Bank which is very correct under the Banking Regulation Act of 1949 as applicable to the cooperative societies. The second statement says UCBs are regulated by RBI but they are supervised by NABARD is very wrong. Regulation and supervision of UCB is done by RBI if it is a rural cooperative bank. Urban cooperative bank RBI karti hai. Rural cooperative bank ke case mein regulation is done by RBI but supervision is taken over by NABARD. Next, UCB should have a minimum Paid up capital of rupees 1 lakh, which is very correct. This is under the definition given under the Banking Regulation Act. Okay, as are we to the cooperative societies. We have correct statements identified karne hai, 1 and 3. Therefore, option D will be the correct answer here. Let's move forward to the next question. Question number 4 says, which section was insert, inserted in the Banking Regulation Act so as to make it applicable to the cooperative banks or the cooperative societies. So an amendment was made and, and it was section 56 part 5 
that was added to the Banking Regulation Act in order to make it applicable to the cooperative societies. Option D is the correct answer. Let's move forward. Question number five. Which of the following statements are incorrect? Again, incorrect statements. Regarding the revised regulatory framework on UCB, the first statement says, under this framework, other cooperative banks are categorized on the basis of their asset size, which is very wrong. UCBs are categorized on the basis of the deposits that they have. So, this statement is wrong. Second, tier 2 used to be will be those who have net assets more than 100 crore and up to rupees 1000 crore. This is very correct. Categorization is going on, whereby UCBs are now categorized into four types. First of all, up to 100 crore. The second, tier 2 constitutes from 100 crore to 1000 crores. Third, if a UCB transits to a higher tier in any year, it will be provided a glide path of up to three years. This is also correct. So, incorrect statement here is just one. Therefore, option B will be the correct answer. Let's move forward. Next question, which says, what is the minimum net worth requirement for a UCB in tier 4? So, if you don't have confused me, tier 1 ke liye, it's rupees 2 crores, right? For tier 2 to 4 or from tier 2 to 4, it is rupees 5 crores. I hope this is clear to you. Let's move forward. Next question, which says, what is the minimum capital to risk weighted assets ratio? The capital adequacy ratio requirement for, for a UCB in tier 2. Tier 1 ke liye 9% hai. For tier 2, it is 12 percent option D. Let's move forward. Next question which says, which uh, which amongst the following are part of the revised criteria for determining any US any UCB as financially sound and well managed? First of all, net NPA should not be more than 5 percent, which is absolutely wrong. The net NPA should not exceed 3 percent. Next, no default in the maintenance of CRR or SLR during the preceding financial year. This is correct. Next, sound internal control system with at least two professional directors of the board. Next, capital adequacy ratio should be at least two persons. It should be at least one person above the minimum capital adequacy ratio applicable to an USB as on the reference date. So, we have correct statements identified karne hai, which is just two. Therefore, option C will be the correct answer to this question. I hope you have not forgotten and you remember whatever we are discussing. And that is only possible if you have seen all the RBA 247 videos as well as you are revising on your own through the PDFs. Let's move forward. Next question which says, recently RBI came up with a framework to allow Indian banks to undertake certain activities through their branches or subsidiaries operating outside India, which are not specifically permitted in Indian domestic market. So there was a regulation, right? Now, which of the following is excluded from this framework? So this framework was basically for all the scheduled commercial banks and the all India financial institutions. Or jitne bhi baaki tarikhe ke banks ne unko exclude kar diya gaya tha. Therefore, regional rural banks, local area banks and urban cooperative banks are excluded. 2, 3, 4. Option B will be the correct answer to this question. Let's move forward. Next question that we have. Which says, all India financial institutions, the group composed of financial regulatory bodies, the play a pivotal role in the financial markets. Which of the following is not an AIFI that is regulated by RBI? So there are five all India financial institutions that are regulated by RBI. And the name of all these fives are very important from your exam's perspective. As I see that RBI has face to face descriptive answers. Mein, they ask a short note on this all India financial institution ke five different categories. Pe. So let's say a short note on Exim Bank. As a pooch lete hai. So not that is not regulated by RBI. So Exim is one of them. IDBI nahi hai, LIC nahi hai, Nabard hai, or National Housing Bank is also a part of AIFI. Two and three. 
Therefore, option C is the correct answer to this question. Let's move forward. Question number 11, which says, Consider and identify the incorrect statements with regard to IFSC, the International Financial Services Center. First, it is a jurisdiction that provides financial services to non-residents as well as the residence institution in foreign currency as well as Indian rupee. That is absolutely wrong. This IFSC provides services to residents, especially the uh, institutional residents as well as the non-residents in domestic in foreign currency. Indian rupee may kabhi provide nahi karta. So, ye aapki statement dilat ho gai. Next, IFSC seeks to bring back those financial services transactions that are currently carried out outside India by overseas financial institutions and this is the major motive behind IFSC. So, ye statement aapka correct hai. Third, IFSC is governed by Several financial services regulators such as RBI, SEBI, and IRDAI, which is very wrong. The International Financial Services Center is regulated by IFSCA, which stands for International Financial Services Center Authority. So, it has a specific power here in order to look up or it has jurisdiction over the IFSC centers. So, this is also incorrect. In the statements 1 and 3, option B is the correct answer. Let's move forward. Next question that we have, which says which of the following conditions should be complied by a parent Indian bank or all India financial institution in order to allow operations of branches or subsidiaries in the foreign jurisdiction as per the recent framework issued by RBI. First, no prior approval of the board is required, which is wrong. Prior approval of the board will be required in case if we uh, allow operations of any of the Indian branches in the IFSC centers. Okay? Next, these foreign branches or subsidiaries can accept structured deposits from any Indian resident, which is wrong. Structured deposits Indian residents ke liye nahi hai. As of now, in India, it is not allowed. So, these structured deposits could be made available to any of the foreign residents or to the non-residents and not Indian residents. Next, these branches should have adequate knowledge, understanding and risk management capability for handling such projects or such products and this is correct. We have to look at which of the following conditions. The correct statement, that is statement 3, option C is the correct answer to this question. Now let's move forward. Question number 13 which says recently the RBI governor announced the monetary policy statement of December 2022. This statement is very very important from your exam perspective. Now with regard to this statement consider and identify the incorrect statements. First in this statement the monetary policy committee has increased the GDP growth prediction for India to 6.8%. But actually the governor of the monetary policy committee has decreased the GDP growth rate. Last time the monetary policy committee ki statement released me thi, at that time they projected 7% to be the growth rate for India. But in the recent December meeting, they downgraded it to 6.8%. Therefore, the statement becomes wrong. Or incorrect. Next, CBI based inflation has been projected to remain in 6.7%. Absolutely correct. And third, the MPC has also decided to remain focused on calibrated withdrawal. Yes, and that's the reason why they have been hiking the interest rates. In order to ensure that inflation remains within the target going forward while supporting growth. So this is also correct. So we need to identify incorrect statement. And the incorrect statement here is just one. Option A will be the correct answer. Let's move forward. Question number 14. So in the recent meeting of the NPC, that is in December, the policy rate has been dashed by dash basis points to dash with immediate effect. Now, take this question. This is very important. But you have to ask questions kis ke liye prepare karna hai? from your exam perspective. If your exam is in April mein hai, and if suppose there is a monetary policy statement that has been released, so that specific month, ka, the, late, the latest M uh, monetary policy statement should be covered 
in depth, right? So, yaha pe, since we are studying, so we should also know as of now. So, it says that the policy rate, that is the repo rate, has been increased. Sabse pehle, the policy rate has been increased by how much basis points? So, this time it has been increased by 35 basis point, right? And the current policy repo rate that we have now is 6.25%. And the correct answer that matches this is option C, increase by 35 basis point to 6.25 percent. Let's move forward. Next question that we have 15. So, as per the same statement, the monetary policy statement, which of the following is true about the Indian economy? Correct statements identify the many. First, the overall system liquidity remained in surplus, which is absolutely correct. Next. Forex reserve deteriorated during the quarter 3 2022-23. Ab aap sab yehi soch rahe hoge ki since policy rate has been hiked by the Reserve Bank of India as well as the US Fed Reserve. Aur jab US Fed Reserve increase karta hai, then at that time uh, India also intervenes, right? RBI intervenes so that it could support the depreciating currency, the depreciating rupee. Or after one year, the forex will decline. Hua hoga. But to your surprise, during this quarter, the quarter three of financial year 2022 23, the forex reserves has actually increased. Therefore, the statement becomes wrong. Next, standing deposit facility rate stands adjusted to 6.5 percent. अब आप सोचोगे यार इतने सारे रेट से SBF, MSF, bank rate इन सब को हम कैसे याद रखें? Simple reason है, simple logic है. आपको बस policy rate, that is the repo rate याद रखना है. That is 6.25 percent, right? And we know that SBF would be lower than the policy repo rate and it will be lower by 25 basis point. Therefore, the SDF would now be 6%. 6.25 minus 25.25 would be 6%. Therefore, the statement again becomes wrong. Correct statements here be option 1. Statement 1, that is option A would be the correct answer. I hope this is clear to you. Let's move forward. Question number 16. So, we have lots of questions for today. I hope you all are motivated and energetic as well. Let's see question number 16, which says in the recent meeting again of the Monetary Policy Committee, which of the following mandate feature has been decided by FPC to be introduced in UPI. Again, very important in order to enhance the ease of making payments in the purchase of securities in the secondary capital market. So the correct answer to this is single block and multiple debit. Therefore, option B will be the correct answer. Ek bar se block ho jayega and then there can be multiple debits from that single block amount. Let's move forward. Next question. 17. So, as per the monetary policy statement, which of the following are the part of the additional measures issued under the statement of developmental and regulatory policy. First, extending the dispensation of enhanced Help to maturity limit. Ye kya hote hai? These are part of the investments done by bank. Bank, like any other company, makes certain investments. That investment is classified into three parts. First one aata hai aapka help to maturity. That part of investment that is meant to be held or to be kept till the maturity of that security. Thik hai? Purchase of those security. Second is help for sale, HFS, right? Uh, the, this securities are kept as an investment by the banks, but this will be sold at a future date. Uh, held for trading, so this is HFP. So this will be traded in the market. So these are those part of the security, but those part of the investment of a bank that is meant for trading. And the last, which do not constitute either to be hold uh, till maturity or, or to be used for trading purpose, the last is available for sale. So these are parts of the investment done by a bank. So this has been enhanced by RPI, not to 98.5 percent. This was the previous limit. It has been enhanced to 23 percent. So this statement is incorrect. Next. Expanding the scope of BBPs to include all categories of payment and collections, both recurring and non-recurring. 
सो लेट्स से रेंट रेंट पे करना है एजुकेशन फी आपको पे करनी है या लेट्स से इनकम टैक्स पेमेंट टैक्स पेमेंट्स पे करने हैं आपको दैट वर नॉट प्रोवाइडेड अंडर बीबीपीएस पर नाउ दे ऑल हैव बीन ब्रॉट अंडर द एंडिट ऑफ बीबीपीएस सो दिस इज करेक्ट इन हैंडलिंग द ईज ऑफ मेकिंग पेमेंट्स थ्रू यूपीएल यूपीएल वाला सही बाय इंट्रोड्यूसिंग प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ मैनेज विद सिंगल ब्लॉक एंड सिंगल डेबिट दिस इज रॉन्ग इट शुड बी मल्टीपल डेबिट अभी हमने देखा है Last allowing resident entities to hedge their gold prices. Gold price is on recognized exchanges in the international financial services center. An important uh, update or an important feature that has been introduced under the December monetary policy statement. So this is correct. So correct statements here are two and four. Therefore, option D will be the correct answer to this question. Let's move forward. Question number eighteen. So this question says that again in the recent monetary policy statement, the bank rate was revised upwards. Yes, of course. As a result, the penal interest rate, after taking on the shortfall in reserve requirements, got modified. So which of the following will be the latest penal rate that will be charged if a bank fails to maintain the minimum reserve requirement? Again, repo rate is six point two five percent. MSF is 0.25 percent higher than the repo rate. Therefore, it will be 6.5 percent MSF. MSF and the bank rate has the same rate of interest. So, bank rate 6.5 percent है. इसमें आप add करोगे 3 percent or 5 percent depending upon the duration of the shortfall in meeting the reserve requirement. And this comes out to be 9.5 percent or 11.5 percent. Therefore, option B will be the correct answer. Ninety five and eleven point five, depending upon the direction of the shortfall. I hope this is also clear to you. Let's move forward. Question number nineteen, which says, which of the following will be the applicable penal rate that will be charged by RBI in case the bank falls to meet its reserve requirement? यहाँ आपको बहुत ध्यान देना है कि repo rate तो नहीं होगा. So this penal rate, since the word penal has been mentioned, that rate is one of the kind of penal rate. Therefore, it will be penal rate plus three percent, जो अभी हमने देखा, or penal rate plus five percent. Two and three, option B will be the correct answer to this question. Let's move forward. The next question that we have, which says, which of the following is the financial, uh, which of the following financial benchmark was recently notified by RBI as a significant benchmark? So recent news here. As of now, we have six financial benchmarks, but with the addition of the modified Mumbai Interbank Forward Rate. Okay. So option C will be the correct answer. The modified Interbank Forward Outright Rate is the new addition to the financial benchmarks, and therefore now we have seven financial benchmarks under FBIL. So option C is the correct answer. Let's move forward to the next question that we have, which says we need to identify the correct statements. So as of now, there are seven financial benchmarks absolutely correct by the Financial Benchmark India Private Limited are notified are notified by RBI as significant benchmark. Next, the person administering the significant benchmark should make an application to RBI within. Three months. So this was the current news. Three months के अंदर authorization लेने पड़ेगी RBI से, right? Next, valuation of state development loans is not a part of the significant benchmark as notified by RBI, which is wrong. It is one of the financial benchmark. Seven benchmarks हैं. So we have MIBOR or MIBOR. Then we have MIBOR, right? We also have the reference rate that we have for the in, uh, for Indian rupee and the dollar, the US dollar. Then we have T bills. We also have government securities. We also have the state development loans. And the recent one is MMFIR, modified micro. So we need to identify the correct statement, and the correct statement here is just one. Therefore, option A will be the correct answer. Let's move forward to the next question that we have. Question number twenty-two says we need to identify the correct statement. It says FBIL, the Financial Benchmark India Private Limited, is jointly promoted by FINDA. Then we have FEDI and Ministry of Finance, which is absolutely wrong. 
पिमडा है राइट फिक्स इनकम मनी मार्केट डीलर्स एसोसिएशन एंड हेयर वी हैव पॉल एक्सचेंज डेरिवेटिव एसोसिएशन ऐसे कुछ है फुल फॉर्म वी कुड सी राइट वी कैन हैव अ लुक एट द फुल फॉर्म एंड वी हैव द इंडियन बैंक एसोसिएशन आईडीए नेक्स्ट इट एम टू डेवलप एंड एडमिनिस्टर बेंचमार्क रिलेटिंग टू मनी मार्केट द मनी मार्केट पिमडा वाला पार्ट गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज एंड फॉरेन एक्सचेंज इन इंडिया व्हिच इज एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट एंड थर्ड the committee on financial benchmarks in june 2013 was headed by shri vijay bhaskar which is again absolutely correct so fbi the financial benchmarks committee shri vijay bhaskar ne dekhi thi was headed by him so correct statements here are 2 and 3 option d will be the correct answer let's move forward to the next question next question says with reference to government securities government securities we need to identify the incorrect statements so it is a non traded instrument that can be issued by both central and state government which is wrong government securities can be ab dekho government securities jo hai government securities can be classified into short term as well as long term so long term or the dated securities can be issued by the central government as well as the state government but the short term bills which are known as t bills can be issued which are issued for less than a year so it can be so it is issued for less than a year and that can be issued only by the central government so government securities ke ye bhi part hai therefore the statement will be incorrect next short term government securities known as t bills there are marketable zero coupon securities which is absolutely correct this is the nature of the definition of the short term t bills the short term g sex and third state governments can also issue t bills at the sound which is absolutely wrong but for dated securities issue kar sakte hain and bonds or dated securities which are issued by the state governments are known as state development loans which is absolutely correct so we need to identify in correct statements one and three option e will be the correct answer to this question I hope this is clear to you. Let's move forward to the next question. Question number twenty-four says: Recently, ASIC approved the proposal to invest its surplus funds in the stock market. So, which of the following financial instruments? So, it is none other than the exchange traded funds. ETF is the correct answer to this question. Let's move forward. Question number twenty-five, which says: Recently, RBI shortlisted. Seven global consultancy firms to use Dash so as to improve regulatory supervision over banks and NBFCs. So RBI had notified it has nothing but artificial intelligence as well as machine learning. अब दो हमें answers पता हैं, so the correct answer to this question will be neither B nor D. It will be option E, one or more than one, because the answer to this question is more than one. B and D, right? So option A will be the correct answer. Let's move forward to the next question, which says recently RBI selected same a list of global consulting firms as experts so as to help analyze its huge database and improve the regulatory supervision over banks and NBFCs. So which of the following is not one of them? So we have already discussed this news. यहाँ पे हमारे जितने भी फोर ऑडिट फॉर्म्स हैं, राइट फोर ऑडिट फॉर्म्स दैट वी हैव दीज आर द पार्ट ऑफ दिस ग्लोबल कंसल्टिंग फॉर्म सो दीज आर द ग्लोबल कंसल्टिंग फॉर्म्स पीडब्ल्यूसी होगा ही ईवाई होगा केपीएमजी होगा डिलॉइट होगा द ऑड वन आउट फ्रॉम हियर इज बी दैट वाज द करेक्ट आंसर वुड बी बी गोल्डमैन सेक्स नाउ लेट्स मूव फॉरवर्ड नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर 27 सेज व्हिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग कम्स Under the supervisory jurisdiction of RBI. Again, this question is very simple, but you have to confuse me. It's not. They're just asking amongst these RBI, who is who is who supervises it. You will be clear with this. NBFCs does it. Then banks does it. Payments banks, local area banks does it. Thus, RBI uh, or thus these institutions, the credit information companies and select all India financial institutions. Are supervised by RBI. The correct answer is yes. These are also supervised by RBI. Therefore, the correct answer, question number twenty-seven, would be all of the above. What uh, option E? One, two, three, four, five, and six. 
I hope this is clear to you. Let's move forward. Question number 18 which says the risk based supervisory framework as adopted by RBI is called SPARC. It's called SPARC bolte hai, which of the following is the correct abbreviation of SPARC. Sabse simple jo aapko samajna hai wo ye hai ki since it is talking about risk. So is full form mein risk so hoga hi hoga. So this you can eliminate, this you can eliminate, risk so hoga hi hoga. Next it is a program. It is a supervisory program that has been issued by RBI. So, this will get eliminated. Now, among these two, the correct answer to this answer is to this question number 28 is option B. Supervisory program for assessment of risk and capital, not capital adequacy. This does not make any sense. So, option B will be the correct answer. I hope it is clear. Hai. Let's move forward. Question number 29 it says recently B issued a framework whereby all Indian financial institutions or sorry whereby AIFs that is the alternate investment funds are allowed to raise money from the foreign investors that is the FPI by way of issuing certain bids. Now in this framework it is also notified that those investors contributing dash in the corpus should not be mentioned in the sanction list notified by UNSC or a resident of the FNTF identified country. So what is the limit? So investors having more or investing more than 25% therefore option D will be the correct answer. More than 25% nahi karna. Let's move forward to the next question that we have which says which of the following is not true about hedging. Hedging se related kaun se sahi nahi hai. First it is a strategy to maximize return for the entity which is absolutely wrong. The purpose of hedging is to save yourself from any kind of risk. It is basically to mitigate risk. So next it says its purpose is to reduce volatility of a portfolio by reducing the risk. This is absolutely correct. Third, the most common form of hedging is derivative. Yes, absolutely. And fourth, hedging cannot be done in case of commodities which is wrong. We have seen that even in the case of agricultural commodities, not only gold, gold or other kinds of important commodities, even in the case of agricultural commodities, hedging is hedging can be done. So, which of the following is not true? One and four. Option B will be the correct answer. So, I hope this is clear to you and you are liking the section. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you have any feedback for us. So the next question that we have says, which of the following will be considered as banned in the recent master direction issued by RBI on hedging of commodity price risk and trade risk in the overseas market? Again, very important question. As we all know, foreign exchange mein, there are authorized dealers and these are uh, identified or categorized by RBI into dealer 1, dealer 2 and dealer 3. So 4 and 5 aisa kuch hota nahi hai first and foremost. Therefore now we need to identify ki for this specific master direction and that was related to hedging of commodity price risk and trade risk. Who can do this? So the bank here would be authorized dealer category 1 that is the scheduled commercial banks. So I hope this is clear to you. The correct answer is option A. Let's move forward. Question number 32 which says according to the master direction, the same master direction on hedging of commodity price risk and trade risk, consider and identify the correct statements. Right? Let us consider the first statement which says if the price of a commodity is fixed by reference to an international benchmark, such price risk will be known to have a direct exposure. That is absolutely correct. Because we are talking about hedging ke baat kar rahi hai in the foreign jurisdiction. Therefore, any kind of reference taken from the international benchmark would be considered to be a direct exposure. Next, the second statement. If the entity is engaged in the business of trading, merchandise, goods and insurances, such entities are exposed to trade risk. Suppose you don't know this about this. Pata nahi hai. Still, you can understand that any kind of transportation charges. How would you transport insurance? It could be done over the internet as well. Is ke liye aapko freight ki zarurat nahi hai. Transportation ki zarurat nahi hai. Transportation kaha kaam aayegi? Suppose you are exporting or importing any kind of, let's say, 
रिफाइनरी ऑयल्स या फिर आप किसी किस्म की शिपिंग बिजनेस में हो वेर बाई यू आर शिपिंग सर्टन थिंग्स इन दैट केस ट्रेड रिस्क वुड बी एप्लीकेबल तो ये स्टेटमेंट आपका गलत हो गया नेक्स्ट इफ द प्राइस ऑफ कमोडिटी इज नॉट लिंक टू एन इंटरनेशनल बेंच मार्क सच प्राइस विल बी नोन टू हैव अ डायरेक्ट एक्सपोजर विच इज एक्सिलिटली रॉन्ग क्योंकि हमने फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट को ही करेक्ट आइडेंटिफाई कर लिया है सो द करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट आउट ऑफ दिस थ्री आफ्टर कंसीडरेशन इज स्टेटमेंट 1 देयरफॉर ऑप्शन ए विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन आई होप दिस इज क्लियर टू यू लेट्स मूव फॉरवर्ड क्वेश्चन नंबर 33 व्हिच सेज व्हिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग फाइनेंशियल प्रोडक्ट्स आर परमिटेड बाय आरबीआई दैट कैन बी यूज्ड फॉर हेजिंग ऑफ कमोडिटी प्राइस रिस्क एंड ट्रेड रिस्क इन द ओवरसीज मार्केट सो दो तरीके के प्रोडक्ट्स आरबीआई ने अलाउ किए हैं द फर्स्ट इज द जेनेरिक प्रोडक्ट कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ फॉरवर्ड्स फ्यूचर्स ऑप्शंस एंड स्वॉप्स इसका मतलब डेरिवेटिव्स एक पार्ट है दिस आर नोन एज अ जेनेरिक प्रोडक्ट्स एंड द सेकंड एलिजिबल इंस्ट्रूमेंट फाइनेंशियल प्रोडक्ट वुड बी स्ट्रक्चर्ड प्रोडक्ट्स इसके बारे में स्पेसिफिकली आरबीआई ने मेंशन नहीं किया है देयरफॉर द करेक्ट आंसर वुड बी 3 एंड 4 ऑप्शन ई वुड बी द करेक्ट आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन आई होप दिस इज क्लियर टू यू लेट्स मूव फॉरवर्ड एंड Let's read the question. Question number thirty-four, which says, according to RBI, entities having exposure to price risk of gold may have such exposure on not on any domestic exchange rate, not on international exchange rate, only on the International Financial Services Center (IFSC). I am saying it again. This is important because it is mentioned in your monetary policy statement. Maybe mentioned it. And in one of the different master direction issued by RBI. Then also RBI has talked about hedging of or having exposure to price risk of gold. Gold ki price risk me kuch hai exposure hai. Then hedging of such risk could be done only on IFSC as of now. Let's move forward. Question number thirty-five, which says, for what period of time are banks allowed to extend or to send by letters of credit to its client in order to meet the margin requirement so as to hedge? The commodity exposure again very technical but अगर ऐसा question आ जाता है let's say in your phase one then you should be very clear कि banks कब तक allow करेगी for the minimum time and out of this the minimum is this one year so the correct answer to this is one year I hope this is clear to you let's move forward next question it says recently the US Fed Reserve hiked its federal fund rate by fifty basis point okay So, which of the following will not be a likely impact on developing countries like India? In me, say, which one impact will not be on India? First, it will result in appreciation, which is absolutely wrong because any kind of hike done by the US Fed will result in depreciation of the domestic currency because people will be taking out money from the domestic country and would be investing into their own country thereby increasing the supply of the rupee paisa kaise nikalenge so they will be uh, converting their whatever holdings that they have into india into dollars so demand for dollars will increase and the supply of the rupee would डिमांड फॉर डॉलर एंड सप्लाई ऑफ रूपी वुड बी इंक्रीजिंग जिसका सप्लाई बढ़ता है वो डेप्रिशिएट करेगा क्योंकि बहुत ज्यादा अवेलेबल है मार्केट में और जिसकी डिमांड बढ़ती है वो अप्रिशिएट करेगी सो रूपी की सप्लाई बढ़ेगी सो इट विल डेप्रिशिएट नेक्स्ट इट विल नॉट रिजल्ट इन अट्रैक्टिंग मोर फॉरन इन्वेस्टमेंट विच इज एब्सोल्यूटली ट्रू बिकॉज जो इंटरेस्ट रेट डिफरेंशियल है वो कम हो जाएगी सो पीपल विल नॉट बी attracted to invest their money to india so the statement is correct third it says rbi will not hike its policy rate as india will already be getting more foreign investments this is not an impact because agar us fed hike karega apne rate of interest ko agar apne federal fund rate ko hike kar raha hai in that case the the emerging countries or so the developing countries like india will also try to increase their policy rate so that the interest differential between these two country us and india could be maintained and so that the foreign investors who has been investing their money in india are attracted enough to keep their money in india and they do not take out their money from india so ye bhi galat hai so which of the following is not a likely impact one three option b will be the correct answer to this question 
Let's move forward to the next question that we have 37, which says, which of the following are the likely reasons that is resulting in increasing Fed rate by the US Fed? So, US Fed Q hike kar raha hai month over month. The major reason or the impact or the reason could be slowdown in the US economy. This could be an impact as well of the hikes done by the US Fed, but this is also a this is also a reason because Itne hike ke baad, the inflation has not been going down, that has been resulting in slowdown. And in order to correct this slowdown in the US economy, another hike is done so that inflation could be corrected and therefore focus could be shifted to growth. So this is, would be one of the reasons. The second is higher job vacancy. This is a problem that the US currently is facing. The third says higher unemployment rate in the US, which is absolutely wrong. The unemployment rate in US has actually gone down. Therefore, the wage the people are demanding is actually increasing. And that is leading to wage inflation. So likely reason would be one and two. Option A will be the correct answer to this question. Let's move forward to the next question that we have, which says, which of the following instructions of RBI are to be followed by commercial banks while preparing the annual financial statement. So this was also issued, a notification was issued by RBI. Let's read the statements. It says it should be prepared as per the third schedule of the companies at 2013. Watch it. We are talking Therefore, anything related to the commercial banks will be mentioned in the Banking Regulation Act, not the Companies Act. Banking banks के लिए अलग से एक regulation है. तो ये statement आपका गलत है. Next, commercial banks should ensure strict compliance with the accounting standards notified under the banking regulation act. This is wrong because यहाँ पे uh, accounting standards as notified under the companies accounting standard regulation. तो companies के अंदर ये चीज आ जाएगी. And third, it says any miscellaneous income that comes under the head Let's say other income exceeding 5% of the total income, then such items should be considered material. So, this was the notification whereby it states that any income coming under other income and that exceeds 1%, not 5%, but 1% of the total income, then such would be considered material and should be disclosed in the notes to account. So, here we have three statements. And we need to identify the correct statement. So here the correct answer would be D. None of them are correct. I hope this is clear to you. Question number 38. Let's move. Question number 39. Which says, recently SEBI has introduced performance benchmarking framework for the portfolio management services. Again, an important, uh, important framework that has been issued by SEBI for the PMS industry. So with regard to this, answer the following question. First question says, which of the following is not a strategy as defined by SEBI under the framework? SEBI ne teen tarikhe ki, sorry, char tarikhe ki strategies batayi hai. This four strategies are, we have equity, then we have debt, we also have hybrid, and lastly we have multi assets. So ye char hai. So which of the following is not a strategy? It would be structured products, thematic funds, and sectoral funds. Three, five, seven. Option B is the correct answer to this question. I hope this is clear to you. Let's move forward to the next question that we have. Which says, yes, SEBI introduced the performance benchmarking framework for the PMS industry. Yes. Again, the same question. The second part of this statement says, under the framework, portfolio management should tag this dash IA investment approach with dash strategy, but it can tag dash IA to dash strategy. Again, confusing one, but very important. That under the framework, portfolio managers should tag one or single investment approach. Aapki approach kya hai? So that should be tagged with one. So it could tag one investment approach with single one strategy. So what is your approach? You have to do equity, you have to do debt, you have to mix your investment in your investment. That is known as the investment approach. So one investment approach should have one strategy. Either equity, either debt, either hybrid or multi-asset. But it can tag more than one, multiple. So it can tag multiple IA investment approach 
to a single strategy let's see my investment approach is to invest in equity person one wants to invest in equity person two wants to invest in debt theek hai or let's say there is another person three who wants to again invest in equity so one one person can invest in one investment approach and another one strategy but multiple are let's say the strategy is equity equity ke andar aap kon kon aa jayenge person one bhi aa jayega aur person three bhi aa jayegi so this is what it is mentioned here the multiple ia investment approach could be linked or could be tied to a single strategy right char hi strategies hain bahut sare logon ki similar preferences bhi ho sakte hain so one one single each so the correct answer here would be b whereby single investment approach or one investment approach could be tagged with one or a single strategy but more than one or multiple investment approach could be tagged to a single strategy option b will be the correct answer i hope this is clear to you let's move forward question number 41 which says according to the paper issued by sebi on benchmarking guidelines for pms industry dash should prescribe a dash benchmark for each strategy so let's say we have equity equity is one of the strategy ab iske liye it is none other than the association of portfolio managers apm in india apm the association of portfolio managers in india should tag or should prescribe three benchmarks let's say nsp कर दिया एनएससी के अंदर सेंसेक्स और लेट्स से निफ्टी वी हैव निफ्टी देन वी हैव सेंसेक्स अंदर बीएससी एंड लेट्स से वन मोर तो ऐसे तीन बेंचमार्किंग दे सकती है राइट सो मैक्सिमम थ्री है द करेक्ट आंसर टू दिस वुड बी ऑप्शन सी वेयर बाय एसोसिएशन ऑफ पोर्टफोलियो मैनेजर्स इन इंडिया एबीएमआई शुड प्रिसाइड अ मैक्सिमम ऑफ थ्री बेंचमार्क्स फॉर ईच स्ट्रेटजी Let's move forward. Question number forty-two, which says, according to the framework issued by SEBI on benchmarking for PMS, consider the correct statement. Consider and identify. It says the association of portfolio managers in India would be responsible for ensuring appropriate selection of strategy and benchmarking for each IA. So this is a operational work or a clerical work, and that will not be done by by FX authority. उसका क्या काम है बस ये बताना कि फॉर इट स्ट्रेटजी देर इज गोइंग टू बी मैक्सिम ऑफ थ्री बेंच पार्क सो ये आपका गलत हो जाए दिस इज द वर्क ऑफ द बोर्ड ऑफ पोर्टफोलियो मैनेजर्स ठीक है दिस स्टेटमेंट और दिस एंटिटी वुड गो हियर दिस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वुड गो हियर इन देयर फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट ए और वन बिकम्स इनकरेक्ट सेकंड डैश दैट इज द बोर्ड ऑफ द पोर्टफोलियो मैनेजर्स शुड प्रिस्क्राइब स्टैंडर्डाइज्ड वैल्यूएशन नॉर्म सिमिलर टू दोस एप्लीकेबल ऑन म्यूचुअल फंड This is the work of APMI. So, ये भी statement आपका गलत है. And third, portfolio managers should submit monthly reports to APMI in addition to SEBI within not fourteen but seven working days from the end of each month. So, this is also incorrect. We need to identify the correct statements. None of them are correct. Therefore, option D is the correct answer. Let's move forward. Question number forty-three, which says recently RBI has signed. A currency swap agreement with which of the following countries it is none other than Maldives, and we have discussed about this. Two hundred billion dollars was signed. Muata. Let's move forward to the next question. We see what is the maximum amount of swap facility that can be provided to a single country under the SAC currency swap framework. So the minimum is hundred million, and the maximum is. 400 million. Therefore, option B is the correct answer. Or Maldives के साथ 200 million US dollars का swap facility sign हुआ था. Let's move forward to the next question, which says under the SAC currency swap framework, swap withdrawals can be done which of the following currency? So it will be done. एक तो हमें पता है US dollar होगा ही, because it was denoted in US dollar. Second in euros and third, since RBI is providing this facility, it can be done in rupee as well. Or other, if you are taking this facility in rupee, you get additional benefits. So one, three, and four. Option B is the correct answer to this question, and I hope this is clear to you. Let's move forward. The question number forty-six. I hope you are still energetic, right? Let's move to the next question. Which saying which of the following statement is incorrect? 
about the global minimum tax. It says it aims at promoting BEPS, which is wrong. The aim is to get away or get rid of base erosion and shifting of profit. Next, it was framed by Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. Again, it is wrong. It is OECD G20 that has actually framed the global minimum tax framework. Third, under pillar 2 of the global minimum tax, 25% of the tax on corporate profit is charged. This is again wrong because 25% of the taxes will be charged under pillar 1. Or this is the guidelines here. We have already discussed this. Criteria, eligibility criteria, ki turnover kitna hona chahiye, profit kitni honi chahiye, and death by 25% would be charged under pillar 1. But here we are talking about pillar 2. Pillar 2 ke under, if you have, let's say, turnover of 750 million euros, in that case, so if you are having 750 million euros, in that case, the tax, the global minimum tax that will be applied on that MNC would be. 15%. So this statement again becomes wrong. So incorrect statements here are therefore option E will be the most suited answer to this question. Let's move forward question number 47 which says which of the following is correct about parties involved in surety bond. We have already talked about this right infrastructure ke related surety bond issue kiye ja rahe hai, kiye ja rahe hai. It says, a principal is the business owner or contractor, absolutely correct. And of IT is usually a corporate entity, wrong. Infrastructure projects usually government they mean, therefore usually it is a government entity. And third, surety company gives guarantee to the contract, all absolutely correct. So correct statement, you have to one in three, option A will be the correct answer. I hope you are enjoying this section. Let's move forward, question number 48. Which says which of the following is incorrect about surety bonds. Agar aap in question ke through bhi aapko bohat clarity mil jayegi about that topic. So it says surety bonds protects the beneficiary. Who is the beneficiary? The obliging. Against acts or events that impair the underlying obligation of the principal. Absolutely correct. This is the major or the main objective behind having surety bonds. Second, surety bond is a legally binding contract entered by three parties. Yes, the principal, the obligee, and the surety. Absolutely correct. And third, surety bond is provided by the insurance company on behalf of the contractor to the entity which is awarding the project. And this project is being awarded by the obligee, which is usually a government entity. And this is also correct. So, incorrect statement here would be none of the above. Option E will be the correct answer to this question. Let's move forward. Question number 49, which says the term base erosion and profit shifting is talked about in context of which of the following? As we all know, base erosion ka kya matlab hua? The number of persons who could pay taxes, we have we are actually eroding that base. We are evading that base by shifting our profit to certain tax heaven countries. So the correct answer to this would be tax evasion. That is curbing of the tax evasion by multinational companies, which will be the most suited answer. Therefore, option B will be the correct answer to question number 49. Let's move forward. Question number 50, which says, which of the following financial regulator has issued a regulatory framework for distribution of capital market products and services. So this framework was issued not by RBI, not by SEBI, but by SCA. Option C is the correct answer. Let's move forward again. The next question which says which of the following is true. So correct statements identify about the framework issued by IFSCA on distribution of capital market products and services. First, Portfolio management services and investment advisory services are parts of the capital market products. Yeah, the services mentioned here, the products kaise hongi. So these will be part of the capital market services only. So this statement is incorrect. Next, distributors are allowed to collaborate. So this is known as associated distribution with other distributors from India and IFSC only. Again, this is wrong. Aap kisi se bhi collaborate kar sakte ho. Let's say in India or in IFSC or in any of the foreign jurisdiction. So this statement again becomes wrong. Third, any registered distributor should maintain a net worth of at least. So if there is a distributor distributing this capital market products and services should have 
a minimum net worth of 50,000 at all times and this is correct and this is denominated in US dollars. So which of the following is true? Three option A will be the correct answer. Let's move forward to the next question. Question number 52. Recently SEBI extended the suspension on derivatives trading in agricultural commodities. With regard to this, which of the following statements is incorrect? We have incorrect statements identify identified. Derivatives help in hedging prices. Absolutely correct. Second, though derivatives trading, through derivatives trading, people can make informed decisions based on reliable price signals. So one of the benefits of using derivatives or hedging in the case of agricultural commodity is to get reliable price signals. This is also correct. And third, derivatives are widely used as a tool of speculation, which is again very true. You can use hedging and at the same time, investors also use derivatives for speculation. So this is also correct. Incorrect statements would be none of them. Therefore, option B will be the correct answer. Let's move forward. Question number 53, which says, which of the following is true about buyback of shares by a company? So the maximum limit for buyback is 20% which is wrong, it is 25%. Any company can buy back or can repurchase its own shares up to a maximum limit of 25% of its paid up capital and free reserves. Second in India, there are two methods of buyback, absolutely correct. These are tender offer and hard offer. Tender offer is correct, hard offer is not The second way of buy back of shares the method of buy back would be the open market method or the stock exchange method so this statement is correct third in case of tender offer 10% of the buy back is reserved for small shareholders ab yahan pe 10% nahi hota tender offer ke andar 15% of the buy back is reserved for the small shareholders so this is also incorrect so correct statement here is none of them okay so therefore option e will be the correct Answer. Let's move forward to the next question. Question number 54, which says we need to identify the correct statement with regard to the social stock exchange. First, both BAC and NSC have received the in principle approval of RBI to set up SSC separate segment. Here, most of you would mark it as correct, but this is wrong because in approval to me, but that approval has been given by. Not RBI but SEBI. So please watch out certain things, certain important pointers. Next, I know the stock exchange was for the first time talked about by Arun Jetri. Again, this is wrong. This was talked about by the current finance minister, Nirmala Sitaraman. And third, in case of social stock exchange, funds of capitals can be raised by way of equity, debt, or mutual funds, which is absolutely correct. So correct statements you have been. Three, that is statement three. Therefore, option C would be the correct answer. Three only. Let's move forward. Next question, question number fifty-five. Zero coupon, zero principle is a listed security under which of the following regulation? So this was notified by the central government under its official gazette notification, and ZCZP would be a listed security under the Securities Contract Regulation Act of nineteen fifty-six. Therefore, option B is the correct answer. Moving forward, question number 56, which says, consider and identify incorrect statements with regard to ZCZP. So, such questions can be important. It says the minimum issue size as described by SEBI is rupees 5 crore, which is wrong. It should be 1 crore. So, the minimum issue size should be 1 crore for uh, issuing funds. Under the social stock exchange using the zero coupon zero principle. Next, minimum application size for subscription is 2 lakhs, absolutely correct. And third, both NPO, the non not for profit organization, as well as for profit social enterprises can issue ZCZP. This is absolutely incorrect because the bonds and mutual funds can be issued only by the NPOs, not by the for profit social enterprises. They can issue by way of equity. So, incorrect statements here are 1 and 3. Option E will be the correct answer. Let's move forward to the next question. Question number 57, which says which of the following is on part of the eligibility criteria with regard to the social stock exchange. First, 
Eligible social enterprises should have a certificate of registration for at least three years. Absolutely correct. This is the minimum eligibility criteria. Next, NPOs can raise capital by issuing not only ZCZP bonds and mutual funds, but also through the issue of equity, which is wrong. Equity bus for profit social enterprises use kar sakte hai in order to raise funds through the social stock exchange. And third, eligible social enterprises can make use of the funds. Raised through the social stock exchange to invest in projects such as affordable housing for all. So this is one of the eligible activity. So this is correct. So we have correct statements identify one in three. Option B will be the correct answer. Let's move forward. Question number 58. It says which of the following is true about the minimum assured return scheme? First, the minimum annual contribution for mass would be 10,000, which is wrong. It will be rupees 5,000 per annum. Next, the scheme guarantees 4 to 5 percent annual return on the pension corpus for 10 years. This is correct. And third, the scheme will be issued by PFRDA, yes, under the national pension system, yes, and will carry a higher management fee, yes, because they are guaranteeing you a fixed or a minimum assured return which is unlikely in the case of NPS because that is market determined. So, correct statements here are 2 and 3. Therefore, option B will be the correct answer. Let's move forward to the next question which says, recently RBI notified that it will be migrating the payment fraud reporting to Dutch, which is RBI's advanced supervisory monitoring system. And that will be done from January 1, 2023 onwards. So, which, which of the following is the earlier facility from which it will be migrated? So, it is not, none other than B, that is electronic data submission portal. ADSP was the earlier facility. Now, the reporting of payment frauds will be done through that. Let's move forward. Question number 16. So, we are reaching towards the end of the session. Question number 16 says, which of the following reason do not justify RBI's decision to migrate to Dutch for reporting any kind of payment fraud? First, the earlier facility provided individual reporting. This is absolutely wrong because the earlier facility just provided uploading into bulk. Jabki Dutch ke andar ap individual upload bhi kar sakte ho, individual reporting bhi kar sakte ho. Next, Dutch will provide additional facilities such as facility to issue alerts, advisories, any kind of online screen based reporting can could be done, option for requesting additional information etc. This is correct, this is one of the reasons. And third, the guidelines are released for reporting of payment frauds by scheduled commercial banks and post-paid payment instrument. As the quick is not it is pre-paid payment instrument. Therefore, this statement is also incorrect. So, which of the following do not justify? One in three, option E will be the correct answer to this question. Let's move forward. Question number 61, which says which of the following is true about Dutch? Dutch ke, Dutch ke baare mein, it is a SEBI FinTech initiative. Yehi se galat hai because it is RBI's initiative and it is not a FinTech initiative but a supervisory initiative, subtech initiative of RBI. Next, Dutch stands for competence and efficiency. Yes. And this is the underlying feature of that. And third, it will help to improve the compliance culture in supervised entities such as banks and DFCs, etc. Absolutely correct. The true statements or the correct statements here are 2 and 3. Option D will be the correct answer. Moving forward to the next question which says, which of the following entity recently received the perpetual license from RBI? to function as a Bharat bill payment operating units under the Bharat bill payment system. So, it is none other than the bill avenue. Option C will be the correct answer. Next question. So, the last question that we have for today says, who is the chairman of the committee on cyber security? So, recently SEBI has expanded this committee, right? And it becomes important for us to know the chairman of this committee. And then the chairman of this committee is A, option A, Naveen Kumar Singh. So this was all that I wanted to discuss uh, in the monthly revision series. I hope you liked the session. The answers are also provided in case if you have any doubt. 
regarding any of the question you can ask in the comment section or you can also make use of the discussion forum in case if you are an enrolled student so keep learning this was all for today thank you and bye bye